Newcastle United have tasted an away defeat for the fifth time this season. Ah, oh, sh**. Here we go again. Take today. My take? Um, yeah, disappointing today. I uh, really feel for the supporters that have travelled so far to, to watch us in difficult travelling conditions. Because we, uh, I think we tried to give everything that we had, but it wasn't enough. I thought Tottenham played well. I don't think we did. Although we had our moments in the game, they could have been different, as always. With football matches, uh, that's a fine line, but no, not good enough. Cohesion wasn't quite there today. I thought they played through us too easily. Um, yeah, we're disappointed with the goals we conceded. So where did it go wrong? And have Newcastle found the solution to the goalkeeping problem? As per Let's Break It All Down and discuss the five things we learned from Tottenham Hotspur for Newcastle United 1. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to help this channel reach 3,000 subscribers. Let's go! Starting off, Newcastle United had defied logic to keep going despite their injury crisis, which was carried forward by momentum, willpower, and the roar of the Geordie faithful. But the damage has caught up as evidenced in this game. Yeah, that must be a relief because you mentioned putting in the shift and the effort that you've been putting in week after week. Mm -hmm. Does it start to tell when you have to keep on going again like, like you have been over the last few weeks? Yeah, I guess so, especially when it's the you know the, the same players and we're not really got the bodies to rotate and there's 90 minutes put on them every few days. Um, but then it comes down to mentality. Um, the boys have a great mentality. They want to keep going game after game and, and that's what we are doing. And unfortunately, the results sometimes don't go your way. But... You, nevertheless, you know, obviously everyone's working hard to make sure that we, we try and change that. It was the day a tired team finally ran out of gas. Would that be the explanation you would give or not? I think it's a, a little bit too simplistic to say that. I think th there's an element of truth there, of course. Um, difficult game. I thought Tottenham played very well. I thought we had our moments in the game, um, especially at the beginning of the second half where I thought we were, we were excellent until they scored. But yeah, we weren't our best physically today. I think you could see that. And I think the lads were giving everything, but um, with not enough resources to, to give more. Furthermore, Newcastle have once again struggled on the road, with Howe's side still boasting only one league win away from home this season. Their record away from St. James's Park is not good enough and desperately needs to improve. Only Sheffield United, one, and Luton, four, have taken fewer points away from home this season than Newcastle United. Five. Plus, Newcastle have also lost more games, six, than they did in the whole of last season, five. Only showing how much this season is proving to be a challenging one. And when you set so, such high standards, which you mm -hmm. have done for the last two, three seasons now, when they dip ever so slightly, even by a very small percentage, mm -hmm. is it all the more noticeable? Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, you know, losing three on the bounce away from home is not ideal. But every team has a blip and I guess you'd rather have it now than towards the back end of the season when it's business time. I think um, for us, you want to get back to winning ways quickly. We've got a big game coming up in a week and then we get back to the Premier League where that's our bread and butter and we need to make sure we're picking up points here. Then, on the balance of play, Spurs deserved to come away with all three points. The hosts had 57% of the ball and peppered 23 shots at Martin Dubravka's goal creating seven big chances in the process. Additionally, Spurs' 23 opportunities at goal led to an expected goals total of 3.88 during the match. In contrast, the Geordie outfit boasted an XG of 1.69 from nine opportunities, but converted just one. What do you say to the players? You're obviously trying to shut them away from what might be excuses. So, so what do you go into the changing room and talk to them about? Well, you have to deal with facts and you have to deal with um, what we've given, how we've performed. And you have to critique it like you would normally. So we know today we were off, um, lacking in conviction in, um, in our in-possession work, lacking in conviction in our out-possession work. We didn't defend the goals well enough. Um, so I will analyse it as I normally would. Yeah, I mean, that was touched upon in commentary. A, a, a slight lack of belief when you had the ball today? Yeah, I thought the moments were there for us. I thought, again, very similar to Everton, where we had chances, um, but we we weren't in rhythm around the box. We weren't uh, clear with what we were trying to do <clears throat> and our execution of that. So scoring goals is always very difficult. Alexander Izak was starving throughout the match and was left isolated for lengthy periods before Howe decided to bring Callum Wilson back into the fray after the hour mark. The latter managed to grab an assist for Jolinton's late consolation goal. The Sweden international had a glorious opportunity nine minutes into the game to open the scoring for the visitors. 
This chance registered an XG of 0.77 alone, which was 46% of Newcastle's total XG for the game. Incidentally, this was Isak's first and only opportunity of the match, having had merely one touch in the opposition's box and failing to win a single aerial duel from three attempts. Nevertheless, Isak wasn't the only player on the pitch in a black and white shirt that should hang their heads in shame. Newcastle United's right side was exposed time and time again. Kieran Trippier put in a nightmare shift on Thursday away at Goodison Park against Everton, but this time it was the centre-back on his side that will want to forget this result as quickly as possible. Having limped off late in the game against Everton in midweek, Howe decided that skipper Jamal Lascelles was fit enough to partner Fabian Schaar once more at the heart of the defence. The duo have now conceded seven goals in the last two matches. Lascelles, in particular, struggled to defend his own penalty area at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium this weekend, losing 100% of his aerial duels, 50% of his tackles, and 33% of his ground duels. Furthermore, the ex-Nottingham Forest defender lost possession of the ball six times throughout the match and was the lowest-rated player across all 22 that started the game, earning a SofaScore match rating of merely 6.2. SofaScore seemed to be generous, though as the Shields Gazette docked Lascelles' display down as a woeful 3 out of 10 after he was caught ball-watching for all of Tottenham's first three goals. Yeah, just, I mean, I don't often like picking out individuals, but maybe in this scenario it helps. Isaac didn't look at full power. Lascelles seemed to be carrying something. Trippier probably made more mistakes this week than he's made in the rest of his Newcastle career. So how much of that with individuals is down to workload? Um, yeah, it's a difficult one because if I uh, commit to that and say, yeah, that's, it's all down to fatigue, we, you know, we've got another game on Wednesday. So um, this is what we wanted this season. The, the Champions League is a, a very special tournament, but with it comes, um, of course, more games. Uh, we hope to have the squad to be able to cope with that. But with the injuries that we've had, I think we've had it worse than any other uh, team that I can remember. You know, these same group of players, I think, have gone for five games. And it is difficult, but we do have some light at the end of the tunnel. I think with Callum and Sean coming back, massive players for us. I thought they both did well when they came on. So we have to be very positive. Look, two, two really difficult games for us, uh, away games where we've suffered. But we have to take the pain and uh, come out fighting again. Then, finally, the man of the match for Tottenham Hotspur was named as Martin Dubravka for his outstanding contribution to all four Spurs goals. Martin Dubravka could also not deal with crosses into the box and was useless at commanding his area. Every cross into the box in the match and at Everton caused panic and you can see that the defense has no belief in him. Would you believe that Martin Dubravka has played in two and a half games since Nick Pope's injury and has conceded seven goals? Should Newcastle play Carius instead? But one thing is for sure, and that is it's obvious that Newcastle need a second keeper in January. And it's no wonder that they are ready to submit bids for two world-class goalkeepers. If you want to know who they are, click the video on your screen now.